it across towards centre half. There, but play on was the call. And going through the centre is Lunn. He's the speedster, this fellow. Look at him go. Right up towards the square. And is it a Geelong West mark? I think umpire stab will pay it. Players arguing with the umpire down here. And it could be Lunn, the player walking back towards us. Number six, Stephen Lunn. Right within scoring range, 15 metres out from goal. Has every opportunity of scoring. Lines them up. They're 5-9 at the moment, Geelong West. He's put it through, and Geelong West moved to six goals, nine with Coburg on two goals, eight. Further hand pass, and look at this, open territory. And moving away down here is Lund. Lund comes right downfield, left foot's in the wards goal, and I think he might have put it through. Yes, another goal for Geelong West. Stand, and moving across there was Lund just to mark it before it went over the line. So Lund looks for the lead. They're a little bit rattled at the moment, but Fred Cook quite the side of the ground. That's Lund, number six of Geelong West, turning quickly. Uh, we'll get a hand pass in here across the wards. Lund. Lund tries to break away, and away he goes. Lund with the right foot kick, looking for Radojevic. Will he find him? Yes! Oh, further up to the pocket, and we see Lund take the mark. A lot of the sparkle has gone out of Geelong West's uh, game in this turn, as Coburg have come back strongly, and Geelong West are trailing by 27 points. That's quite a deficit in uh, a comparatively low-scoring game. As well. So he tried to break away, written into the ground, pushed on the back, and he gets the free. He's kicked it over his head, but he'll be forced to... Um, Get up and uh, take the kick. Actually, the player who kicked it over his head was uh, Lund. They're like a dog and a bone out there, as we see coming into it, Hardigan. Hardigan bowled over. Geelong West players have it in front of them. Lund gets it across here to break. But Lund of uh, Geelong West, right near the BFA. It's long. Right up, Bill, and it's 11 minutes in. Lund has the ball. He's about to put Geelong West into attack again. There it goes up towards the run. There was Cleary of uh, Coburg. He couldn't get it. Lund hand pass Halbert. Halbert with a hand pass across to Herbert. Herbert fumbles the ball and it's taken away from him by Lund. And Lund at the 20 and a half minute mark. Races away from his opponent on the mark. Shoots it. I uh, was going to use this forum to um, probably use it as a bit of a roast. You know, coaches and players. But no, I won't do that. I'll try and do the right thing for once in my life. Well, 79. My one and only year at West. But um, to be honest, lifelong memories still exist. Um, I suppose going on the uh, format that's been uh, done before me, uh, I'll start off with um, where it all started. Uh, my junior senior footy uh, basically spent at Newtown, um, except a couple of years at St Joey's, because I think I was expelled from Bell Park High School and uh, Mum uh, decided that uh, I needed a little bit of uh, Catholic uh, <coughs> discipline. Not that sort of discipline. No, not that sort of discipline. Um, so uh, I think up until then, I was probably the only proddy ever to go to, to, uh, to St Joey's because uh, uh, the reason they let me in, being a Protestant, was uh, they said, if you, uh, if you play footy with us, then uh, you can come and... You know, go to school here. So I really had no say in it. My mum said, yep, yeah, he'll play footy for you. So that was it. So a couple of years since Joey. But, um, I played Evelyn Hurst for Newdown and um, had uh, some success personally uh, with a premiership. Um, best and fairest in 78. And, and that, uh, that grand final that we played uh, against North Shore was probably uh, one of the most memorable ones um, the old timers tell me. Um, it was a, a terrific hard game and uh, we got up uh, late in the last quarter and uh, it, it's, uh, it's been one of those games that's been a, a real treasure all my life. Um, very proud of uh, teammates and the club to, to get up that particular day. It was a, it was a great performance. And um, after that in 78, um, well at that time I was running professionally um, with Edgy, Arthur Edgerton's um, guys down at North Geelong, and uh, he's a great mate of Billy, Billy Goggins, one of, great, one of Billy's great mentors, actually, and, uh, and it was through this association that I think that Billy took an interest in, in me in regards to footy. Because uh, Billy, you know, he, he was a bit before himself, Billy, when, when it came to coaching. I mean, he, he loved to be coaching 
today because it was all um, it was all about run and skill, which today's game is uh, is uh, dominated by 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 pace and skill. Um, and so Billy, um, foreseeing that, um, uh, he, 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 he thought it would be a major factor in the changing um, landscape of footy. So, so as I say, after the flag went it near down, uh, Bill invited me down to West, and I really couldn't believe it. I was going going to play with guys I'd admired every you know second Sunday down at the bike track. Uh, and, and money was never really an issue with me me and footy. So. Uh, so anyway, look, I'll share you a few things about 79. Uh, I'm actually reading a little bit of stuff here. I, I took some notes, so bear with me while, uh, while we, we go over the page here and, and uh, we'll reflect on that money issue. And, um, you know, I say Goggin and Gannon and my future father-in-law, Tommy Coulter. Thanks, Tommy. Good on you, mate. Offered me, um, I think it was about three grand for the year. And I was getting a lot more than that at Newdown, but it didn't worry me because I was going to get to play better footy. Um, it turned out that the <laughs> three grand was never paid anyway, so it didn't matter. Uh, it didn't take me long to find out um, about Billy's philosophies on footy because um, we trained bloody hard and uh, long. Uh, a lot of contested footy was, uh, was an important part of, of, of Billy's training. Um, but I must admit, 16 aside suited me uh, down the ground because running was my main attribute, and, and uh, it was easy because we, we had gun players on every line. Uh, you know, we had Scarlett uh, up front with uh, Joey and Wellesley and uh, Gilly, Gil, Tony Gilmore in the centre. He's just a champion, and uh, the back line, you know, the likes of Eddie and Russell and Chappie. Uh, Mark Brown running around, just to name a few. And they, these guys, honestly, they, they were my heroes, and it wasn't hard to get a kick in that, this side, let me tell you. And uh, one bloke I loved playing with was, um, uh, hasn't been mentioned, dispatched for many, many years, was Steve Parsons. Um, shit, he was scary, but he was a great bloke, and uh, we all walked taller when he was on the ground. And uh, we, we actually, uh, that year, we we, was, we started off with a real bang. We... Um, I'm not sure whether it was eight on the eight on the trot or eleven on the go, um, and then then we'll come up to play. We're undefeated. We're we'll going to come up and play against Caulfield, as I remember, Caulfield away. And at the time, it, it didn't compute. But uh, Billy planted this seed of doubt in playing Caulfield up there. I remember that all week he kept reminding us of, of um, the perils and dangers of playing Caulfield at Caulfield, and. Uh, they were on the bottom, actually. Um, they hadn't won a game, I'm not sure. But, uh, yep, you picked it, sure enough. Cold, windy day. And we get beat for the first time. And I never actually saw this, but uh, rumour has it that uh, Billy, Gannon and co got 8-1 to one on Caulfield that day. Feeding, I still think we're... They were counting the money still as we, we leap past Werribee on the bus and... Um, I suppose the little master had pulled off a big plunge. Um, North Shore and St Mary's and Thompson sides in those days in the Evelyn Hurst taught me about hardness and um, a bit of thuggery. Uh, it was a good school to have coming to play VFA because um, Fair Dinkum it was sometimes willing and brutal that year. It was um, it was good hard footy and I, I really loved it. And, and we made the GF the hard way, going through the semi and then the prelim, and I reckon we're the best side that year. But and it was really confident winning. Uh, but when Pentridge uh, opened its doors on Sundays and left left, left most yeah let, let most of Coburg's players out to play, um, it evened things out a bit. Uh, Gunner, I remember Johnny Scarlett, he was going great, and and uh, then. You know, I reckon probably the worst incident I've ever seen on a footy field happened. Uh, I just wish Steve Parsons had been on the ground that day. Still, we had our chances, just uh, we just couldn't get over the line. Um, I only wish probably Hinky, uh, instead of you having the ball, would rather have Joe have the ball in those last few minutes in the goal square. It was, it was a pretty big disappointment uh, in my career, but um, we had a few more to come, didn't we, Billy? Uh, even though I was disappointed, I, I remember fondly the year that I really can't forget. 
So, so uh, after a few weeks, um, it became known that Billy had got the job down at Geelong, and not before time, to be honest. Uh, and it just goes to show, <laughs> you can't go on holidays, Billy, to Hawaii if you're an unsuccessful VFL coach. You only have to ask Rod Olsen that. <laughs> and soon as Billy left West, I, was, um, I, I thought I'd go back to New and I was appointed um, you know, captain coach. Um, and I, I actually fulfilled that position in the early part of 1980. Um, and Bill was uh, telling me that he was going to block my clearance from Western New Down because he wanted me to come down to Geelong. And I thought he was bluffing, and I, was, I didn't think I was anywhere near good enough to, to play VFA, let alone VFA. I, I, held, I held my ground at New Down right up until about a couple of weeks before the season started, and when, when it became apparent that Billy was playing hardball, I was a bit snookered, so uh, no clearance, no footy, no money. I did a deal with Geelong that if they appointed and subsidised a reputable coach replacement, then I'd come and play. Um, so they, they arranged for Ronnie Tenable to, to get the job, which to all and sundry um, everyone was okay with. And so then I got on with my VFL career. Career? I don't think you'd call it a career. But I, to this day, look, it was an absolute rush. Um, I'd never have played in the VFA or VFL without the opportunity that Billy gave me. Um, I am a lot. I really respect him. I love the days of him playing tennis down at Mico Burns with Gannon and trying to cheat every point. And it was the same on the golf course. Cheat, cheat, cheat. You know, it was just uh, he and Gannon used to make me laugh. And it, look, although it was only a year, I had in '79 at West. Um, it, it's always been a massive part of my life. Um, I got coached by a legend. And I played with uh, Finnegan, some of the finest players in the land. And I really think if Billy had had his way entirely down at Geelong, that he would have taken a, a, quite a few more players from West that year, besides myself. And, and I think Ian Darren down, down to Geelong because he had utmost respect for the players at West and uh, as we had for him. And uh, oh, look, I hope to catch up with a few of the boys um, over the next uh, year or two if I come down and... Uh, um, Maybe we can catch up and have a drink and uh, at some um, past players thing, um, like in 2019. Like, let make it 40 years. Well, not 40 years after the uh, the event. So, uh, good on you. Thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to, to share my my fantastic year at Geelong West, my unpaid year at Geelong West. Cheers. See ya. You've given your heart to get here and your soul to get it right. You can take them, boots and all, oh, but it's sure gonna take a fight When you spend all week getting to your peak, you're gonna have your say You bet On Sunday, it's the real